My name is Chris Biffle. I'm director of Whole Brain Teaching. I also have here Nancy Stoltenberg, who is the director of certification. And this is a video about our new book, Color Writing. It's a new book, but Nancy and I and others have been working on this way to teach writing for, for 20 years. Uh, we're gonna make an astounding claim. We know how to teach writing. <laughs> okay, no, that's mind blowing. Uh, so here we go. Uh, more rapidly paced than most of our presentations because we wanna make a nice short video. Whole brain teaching, if you don't know, 9 million YouTube views, 100,000 Facebook likes used in 100 countries, one of the world's most popular instructional systems. Here's the new book, Color Writing. You can teach kids from kindergarten to 12th grade using a color-coded pattern, how to write an essay. And you do it by beginning with three incredible discoveries. One, in about 2010, we saw that kids can speak a paragraph before they can write it. Andrea Schindler, co-founder of Whole Brain Teaching, doesn't have her kids put pencil to paper until January. So when kids can speak an essay, it's a lot easier for them to revise and to keep going. All right, second discovery. Second discovery is, and this solves a huge problem. How do you write a thesis sentence? When I was in high school, I said, hey, the thesis sentence can go at the start, it can go at the middle, it can go at the end. No, you can't teach kids. It can go anywhere because it might end up going anywhere. Our thesis statement goes at the end of the first paragraph and it has three parts. Nancy, explain the three parts and we call it a triple whammy because of the three parts. Go, Nancy. Well, thank you, Coach. Okay, so that first discovery was we found out that students can actually speak a complete paragraph before they can write it. And that second discovery is that thesis statement. And this thesis statement is called our triple whammy, and it is doable by even kindergartners, maybe even younger, all the way to college. All right, let's, let's Nancy, give me a topic, and I'll just generate on the fly no rehearsal, a triple whammy thesis statement. Go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, Coach. Um, a butterfly cycle. Okay, uh, here's my thesis statement. The butterfly cycle goes through three steps. Oh, how about this? There are three steps in the butterfly cycle, cocoon, larva, and butterfly. There it is. Uh, my three favorite baseball players, as you all know, because we're such close friends, Mickey Mantle, Whitey Ford, and Yogi Berra. So any essay that has a body could have a thesis statement divided into three parts. Second major discovery. Here's the third major discovery. The third major discovery is why we call it color writing. Color code the thesis statement. So the first part of a triple whammy is green, green because we're getting going. The second part of a triple whammy is blue, blue because we're sad, it's almost over. And the third part of a triple whammy is red because red, it's time to stop. So my favorite baseball players are Mickey Mantle green, Whitey Ford blue, Stan Musial red, and then the next sentences are a green sentence, a blue sentence, and a red sentence. Blue, explain to us appropriately, my dear Blue Dawn, the color coding. Go, my friend. All right, thanks, Coach. So in our triple whammy, we have things color coded. The first example is green, because we're <coughs> getting going. The second example in there is blue, because you're sad, it's almost done. And then the third one is red, because you are finished, that's the end. Very good. Now, how do we do this? Well, if you look at this 
sample essay, and it's in the book, you see Andrea Schindler's kids have a triple whammy, a one paragraph, a one sentence triple whammy, a parrot, a tiger, and a snake. The next couple of sentences are about the parrot. Next couple of sentences are about the tiger. And the next couple of sentences are about the snake. And honestly, folks, you don't need to worry much about the conclusion because if the kids can do all of these parts, the conclusion will follow pretty naturally. Tiffany, explain this inner city kindergarten essay from our dear friend, Andrea Schindler. Go, Tiffany. Thank you, coach. So what we have here is uh, an inner city kindergarten essay, amazing, um, all about the rainforest, starts with the topic sentence with a green parrot, blue tiger, and a red snake. Then we have a couple of green sentences all about that parrot. We got a couple of blue sentences all about the tiger. Um, finally, we have red sentences about the snake. And then naturally, the conclusion just comes together on its own. Yes. So my friends, one suggestion, and some people are doing this, is get four colored pencils. A black pencil for part of the triple whammy, then a green, a blue, and a red. And it's just fun to write in color coding. And it just shows you an essay is not a mysterious thing. It's a small rainbow. <laughs> That's what an essay is. Here we go. Now let's keep going. So how do we set this up? Oh, it's so complicated. <laughs> you pair kids up, weaker reader and stronger reader, and you don't tell them which is which. And they are going to play games, taking turns as they play setting a record for how many times they can, can finish the, the task in a minute, and then playing again and trying to beat their record. If you have an extra kid left over, you're that child's partner. So here is the first game. My favorite dessert is. Now I'm going to make a large point here. Everybody huddle up. In color writing, we just work on five topics, the same five topics all the way through the book. My favorite dessert, my favorite movie, my favorite game, people I love. Five topics all the way through because we want to make it as easy as possible. The same topics over and over and over again. Because we're not teaching kids how to write an essay from scratch. We're teaching kids the pattern of an essay. And for that, you don't need them to think up topics. Megan, explain the idea that there's only five topics that we work on and we just move among, among those topics. Go, Megan. Thank you, Coach. So there's the same five topics that you're going to rotate through through this entire color writing game because the whole purpose of this is not for students to generate those ideas. The purpose of this coach is to make sure that they can work through those five things so that they can see what that essay is going to look like. Yeah, this solves a huge problem. The huge problem is kids say, I don't know what to write about. Oh yeah, here it is. I don't know what to say next. Well, look at your green part. Write a sentence about that. Huge problem, and we've got it solved. I just wish it wouldn't have taken two and a half decades <laughs> to solve it. All right, so here's game one. What we're going to do is we're going to play a 30-second game here. We'll, uh, we'll use um, uh, Dawn and Nancy. Uh, watch as they play for 30 seconds. Nancy will start. She'll say one. Dawn will... Uh, continue and she'll say two. They will count as they go. And let's see uh, how many they get in uh, 30 seconds. Uh, in class, you do a minute. Uh, Nancy, are you ready? I'm ready. And go. One, my favorite dessert is fudgy brownies. Two, my favorite dessert is chocolate chip cookies. Three, my favorite dessert is um, a yellow cake. Or my favorite dessert is banana pie. Fruit. 
stop. Okay, so they counted, they set a record. We knew long ago that nothing motivates kids like setting and breaking records. There's only one thing that motivates kids more than that, and that is a dice roll. And we'll talk about how to incorporate dice rolls later on. All right, ladies, now everybody huddle up. Simple rule. The first time you play, you can't repeat. The second time you, you play, you can use ideas from the previous time. Why? We want to make it easier. Give me, <laughs> never heard of easy writing. All right. So uh, Dawn and Nancy, you're going to play again. You're going to try to beat your record of, I believe it was four. Give each other some ideas and encourage each other to get it going a little bit. You got to beat that record. Go, Dawn. Go, Nancy. All right. You cut out a little bit, but I think what you want us to do is kind of do a little pep talk before we try again. Is that right? Yeah. All right, Nancy, we could do okay. like ice cream, different kinds of pies. Yeah, Don, you can get into more cookies. I really think you need some healthy desserts too. What do you think? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's stay with the Who needs that? Well, we got to get them faster. Okay. We're faster. going too slow. All right, here the we clock go. is running. Now, you always start with it. If, if Nancy started the first time, Don starts the second time. So peanut butter start the first time, jelly start the second time. All right, Don, Nancy, you got to beat four. Come on. Ready, set, go. Yep. One, my favorite dessert is banana bread. Er Two, my favorite dessert is carrot cake. Er Three, my favorite dessert is M&M's. Er Four, my favorite dessert is fudgy brownies. Er Five, my favorite dessert is cherry pie. Er Six. Uh, six. My favorite dessert is um, butter brickle ice cream. Arr. Stop right there. They broke the record. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Huddle up. It's guaranteed that if kids play this game a few times, they will keep breaking their record. Guaranteed. Because they will use material from the previous time. They'll learn to talk faster. And this is a huge bonus. Huge bonus. Huge bonus. They will be speaking sentences. Kids do not speak sentences. And then you can say, when you start a sentence, start with a capital letter. When you finish the sentence, put in a period. Er, I taught college. Something's going on in your grade levels, my friends, because I had kids who didn't start sentences with capital letters. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Who would imagine it? It's too real and scary. All right, here we go. So that's how we play. Now we can pick up pace a little bit. Here is game two. When do you go to game two? Whenever your kids have a sense of game one. So first you might use desserts game one, and then you might use uh, uh, games game one, and then you might use movies. Keep going in game one until they can speak single whammies. Then in game two, same thing. Take turns, set and break records, take as long as it takes for your kids to be able to speak two different things. Here's game three. This is the problem. This is the triple whammy. Now everybody huddle up. It's pretty easy for kids to think of two different things. That third one takes a lot of practice. Because the third one is an essay in miniature. So if you have my favorite desserts are one kind of cookie and pie and another kind of cookie, we're going to call that a clunker. The three parts of a triple whammy must be completely separate. So we have completely separate body paragraphs. Christina, explain the difficulty and the joy of creating a triple whammy thesis sentence with no clunkers. Go, Christina. Thank you, coach. So the difficulty with making a triple whammy sentence is because it's easy to get those first two ideas, but the third one just seems to be very, very difficult. Also, in a triple whammy sentence, we have to avoid clunkers. We do not want 
on top are things that are in the same family because that makes it harder to write the paragraphs later. That's very good. Now, you may have noticed that Christina uh, is speaking with uh, a very unusual voice. She is trying out for a movie in which she's playing a hit woman. And so she has to have that tough kind of New York sound or voice. And, you know, Christina, you're, you're getting it down. Good job. Okay, now, here we are at uh, game four. Game four, simply add a sentence for each of the parts of the triple whammy. At this point, you probably want to start kids writing. Let's talk about writing. Let's talk about handwriting. Huddle up. We tell kids, now when you write, be sure it's neat. And the big letters start at the top and the little ones halfway. And be sure you have the right spacing. And don't crunch your letters together too much. And, oh, don't forget that period. No. You tell them. Here is my green marker and here is my red marker. I'm walking around the class. All you're working on is neat capitals. I'll circle your messiest capital and I'll circle your neatest capital. Messy, red, neat, green. Give me more green and less red. Work on one handwriting skill at a time. Capitals, spacing, period size, uncrunched letters, tall letters, short letters, put it together. If they're only focusing on one thing at a time, guess what? You might see some progress. Give me this for progress. Uh, Aaron, you probably have taught kids handwriting for a while. Have you ever noticed that if you give them too many instructions, you don't get any of the instructions followed? Ever notice that, Aaron, my good friend? Thank you, Coach. Yes, I very, very small, small steps we have to take or nothing gets done. That's right. Very good. All right. Let's press on. Now, here is game five. Game five is now just a big, huge paragraph. And here's my idea. My idea. Set a timer. For something like that, it's 10 minutes. You say, we're all writing for 10 minutes. If you finish, recopy it. Otherwise, kids will go and they'll do this. They'll fold their arms as if they're done. You're not done practicing. We're still practicing on the clock. Patricia, explain children's tendencies to want to get finished and stop practice. Talk about it, Patricia. Oh, yes. Thank you, coach. As soon as they're done, they just want to hang back. I'm done. And instead, we tell them to do it again. Yeah. Keep on Keep going. going. Recopy. Now, huddle up. This is the tricky step. Triple whammy part is tricky, but this is a tricky step. You notice that I have a triple whammy thesis and then three paragraphs. The tricky step is the part before the thesis. Give me a, oh yeah, I've been there, coach. Look at this. Dorothy Bach, I see that you're really paying attention. I bet you have graded some papers in your time that you thought, I don't know what these kids are thinking. Dorothy, listen to me. This is called the funnel. It's a classic pattern in English composition. We start broad and then we come in narrow. So if my topic sentence is gonna be about my favorite desserts, I'd have an orange sentence about desserts, another orange sentence about desserts, and then my triple whammy about desserts. Dorothy, explain and use the funnel gesture. Explain the power of the funnel gesture. Go. Thank you, coach. You're welcome. So um, we're going to use the funnel um, approach when we are writing our paragraph. And we're going to have an orange sentence about our first idea, a another orange sentence about our second idea. No, 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 no. 
Think oh, of it this way. Sorry. Dorothy, if your triple whammy is about your- Tell me I'm still cool. <laughs> you are ultra cool. You are wiggly cool. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy, if your triple whammy, get kids to do the triple whammy first. If the triple whammy is about games or TV shows or states or superheroes, then the first two orange sentences are not about the green, blue, and red. They're about the topic as a whole. So the first orange sentence would be about games. Everyone likes to play games. Playing games is lots of fun. My three favorite games are. So you take the, the topic that mentioned in the triple whammy and write two sentences about that topic, but not the parts that will give you a funnel. Got it, Dorothy? I'm not sure if I do, but. <laughs> let me give you another. I haven't example. tried the funnel approach yet. All right, let me give you another example. Dorothy, let's say your triple whammy is, my three favorite superheroes are Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. What should the first orange sentence be about? Batman. No. The first orange oh, sentence. Oh, superheroes. About, yes. Oh, superheroes. Girl. Now, <laughs> go slow, Dorothy. What is the second orange sentence about? Um, everyone loves superheroes? Yes. The first two sentences are about superheroes. And then the triple whammy gives three different superheroes. Let's do that again. Let's say, um, let's say your triple whammy is about your three favorite states. Provinces. <laughs> yes. The first sentence is going to be about the United States. And the next sentence is going to be about the United States. And then the triple whammy is about your three favorite states. OK. Okay. Go on. Explain the idea of these orange sentences. It's tricky, but if you just look at what your triple whammy is about, that's what the orange sentences are about. Go, Don. All right, thanks, Coach. So for this funnel approach, we think about that triple whammy and what is our triple whammy about? So for triple whammy is about sports, your two orange sentences are going to be about sports in general. Yeah. If your triple whammy is about the favorite characters in a story, then your two orange sentences are going to be about that story. Yes. So kind of start with your triple whammy, see what that topic is and give some more details about it and funnel down to that triple whammy. So Dorothy, if your kids were writing an essay about the old man in the sea and they said, the three most interesting things about the old man in the sea are blah, 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 and blah, blah. The first two sentences, would be about Ernest Hemingway and the old man in the sea. Then you would give them the triple whammy. Dorothy, explain that back to me. Go ahead. Thank you, coach. So welcome. So if I understand the funnel approach is to introduce your topic with your um, orange sentences, which are going to give you your ideas that will lead to your triple whammy sentence. You got it. Give her a 10 finger rolling woo. Woo. And Dorothy, when you receive a 10 finger woo, it is, yes, you should say thank you for the 10, <laughs> give her a 10 finger woo. Woo. All right, very good. Now. Thank you. That was game six, here's game seven. Game seven is simply taking everything we said and putting it together. So this might be a 10 minute writing assignment over five days. Get the triple whammy, work on the body of the paragraph, do the introduction, do the conclusion, Here's a new idea. The wrong way to write an essay is to write the first sentence 
and then go on down to the second, third, fourth, fifth. That's the wrong way. The right way is get your triple whammy. Okay. Then get the green body, blue body, and red body because it follows from the triple whammy. Then look at your triple whammy, see what the subject is, get your two orange sentences, and then construct your conclusion. I'll say that again. Get the triple whammy however long it takes. Green body, blue body, red body follows logically. Look at the triple whammy, see what the subject is, not the parts, what the subject is, two green sentences about the subject, and then the conclusion follows very, very naturally. Nancy, explain the bizarre idea that you don't write an essay first sentence to last sentence, because it's going to be a mess. Go, Nancy. Well, thank you, Coach. Okay, you guys, so the funnel approach is unique to us. This is at a higher level. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to start with that triple whammy. I've got three pieces and those three pieces. Now I'm going to write my, um, my green, two of those. Then I'm going to write my blue, two sentences. And I'm going to write my red, two sentences. Stop then right I'm there. going to go back. When, stop right there. When we get to the essay, it's going to be three green sentences, three blue sentences, and three red sentences. That gives us a nice paragraph. Keep going, Nance. Okay, I stand corrected. Tell me I'm still cool. So we've got okay. three about each color. Yeah. And then we look at that and we know our topic. We go back up. We decide what was our topic. We're going to write those two orange sentences that introduce that topic. And then it's easy to write that conclusion at the end. We just made an amazing essay. Very, very good. Now, my friends, the bonus. Huddle up. The nightmare of doing research. You've done research. You know, it's a nightmare. You're going through all these pages and you're trying to find the quotation and how does it fit in the body? We don't do no actual stinking research. We make it up. Make it up so the kids get the idea of what a quotation is. Check it out. Here's the bonus. Imaginary text citation. So you could say, the New York Times states, comma, give a full sentence Capital, capitalized. Notice the pattern here. I have the capital there. And my friends, one of the toughest problems in the modern world, far tougher than getting humans to the moon is, the burning question, does the period go inside the quotation marks or does it go outside the quotation marks? It goes inside. Don't tell anyone because no one knows. It goes inside because the period is a part of what you're quoting. I'll say that again. The period is a part of what you're quoting. So it should be inside the quotes. Aaron, explain how happy you are to learn the answer to the great riddle of the modern world and why it goes inside. Go, Aaron. Thank you, coach. I have been wondering this forever. Yeah. Um, so the period inside a quote, it has to go inside the quote because the quote itself is a sentence and it needs to end with that period. Very, very good. And then the next piece after is write a sentence about the quote. Very often when, when you see a quotation in a kid's paper, it's just hanging there. I'm talking about chimpanzees and now here's a quote from Jane Goodall. And now I go talk about ch chimpanzees again. Talk about the quotation. So set up the source, full sentence quotation, and help kids with this. And then a sentence about the quotation. And just practice that part. Just practice that part for two or three weeks. Then there it is. Five paragraph essay with the quotation. In the first paragraph, put it at the end. In the second paragraph, at the start. In the next paragraph, put it in the middle. It can go anywhere. <laughs> Everybody ought to love. The green quotation can go anywhere because 
It's about the green stuff. Elizabeth, explain how happy you are to know that you can have kids write essays with text citations without doing all the stinking research, which is a nightmare. Talk about it, Elizabeth. Thank you, coach. Yeah. I am just so excited to learn that I can teach my kids to write a source with the quotation marks, with the period inside, without having to do all the research. We can just practice and practice and practice and put it into our paragraph wherever it needs to go. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth, this way of teaching writing seems so bizarre, but it really isn't. It says that the brain only learns one thing at a time. If I'm teaching you how to play tennis, I don't give you a tennis racket and a ball and say, go play tennis. I show you how to hold the ball. I show you how to toss the ball. Now let's do the backswing. So take any complex task, break it down into man manageable parts. In basketball, we call it part whole practice. Here's a part, here's a part, here's a part. Teach it as a whole. And that's what we've done with color writing. All right, Nancy, do we have any questions here? Because we've managed to give a pretty short little video on color writing. Any questions, Nancy, down in the chat box? Uh, well, thanks, Coach. I think the biggest question I'm seeing that more than one person has asked is, younger grades even, can I do this whole class? Or do I have to start with individual students working together? Here's my answer. I think, first of all, you can do it whole class as long as kids can take turns with the single whammy and the double whammy. I think you also can do it whole class once you work with them and generate what a triple whammy looks like. And I know Andrea Schindler, as I said at the start, her kids can speak triple whammies before they even start writing them. Once a kid can speak a triple whammy, then it's time for desk writing. And in desk writing, do five, 10 minutes a day and it's over. Next day, five, 10 minutes. Next day, five, 10 minutes. Next day, five, 10 minutes. And then you can walk around with a red green marker. Um, the key is not to teach an essay by telling kids, write the first sentence of an essay, now write the second sentence. Now here's the next sentence. And if you're color coding, when they're actually doing writing, you prep them a little bit at the start and then you walk around and help them out and help some kids more than others. Any other questions? Well, I think you just addressed it because there is a question. Um, my school district requires I get that pencil in their hands sooner than I think they're ready and um, your suggestions at this point, but I think you may have answered it. Yeah, here's the... All right, let's do cards on the table, huddle up. If you're a new teacher and your school district says to do something, baby, you better do it. But when you get tenure and you get your hide is a little thicker than it was when you're a newbie, then you go along with the district as little as you can when it doesn't make sense to you. Don't tell anyone that, but that's what you do. That's what veteran teachers do. When you talk to people that have been in the district 20 or 30 years, they say, all right, I'll give this a head nod, but I know that this really works. So if I was in a district and I was brand new and they said, do it a certain way, I'd do it. As I got more experience and as I got tenure, all tenured teachers are lone wolves. I mean, they do things their own way based upon 10 or 15 or 20 years experience. Don't tell anyone I ever said that, okay? I mean, this would be crazy if I put this on the internet, which I am going to do. Any other questions? Um, not it? so much a question as a comment. What you just did today, Coach, was you said, we're not learning how to write the essay, we're learning a pattern for the essay. And to make practice happen more often, then just that piece at the morning time or afternoon, keep that pattern up all day. And when you're talking to your students, refer to that pattern, have them speak in those complete sentences, add that um, you know, additional information. That's how you keep it going all day long across all your subjects. 
Could I add to your addition, Nancy? Oh, you got it. Huddle up. Use leading sentences that have numbers. Tell me one of your favorite foods. Tell me one of your favorite games and get them to speak a sentence back. One of my favorite games is blah, blah. After a while you say, tell me two of your favorite games. Tell me three of your favorite games. If you use that number leading sentence, it guides them to a single whammy, a double whammy and a triple whammy. All right, my friends. Um, if you have questions, uh, please go on one of our Facebook pages. Nancy, can you put in a link to our, just go, go and type in whole brain teaching super improver. I'd love to see the results. Here's a crazy, this, I know this is crazy. What if you had some experiences with color writing that would help other teachers learn how to teach writing? Could we do that? I think we could, and I think we should. Nancy, um, 